Sometimes when designing and developing our games, we need to strike the difficult balance of presenting the right amount of information to the player without overwhelming them with walls of text and data. Often, for the purposes of aesthetics, we may also want to avoid lots of verbose and very utilitarian interfaces. After all, icons are much easier on the eye, but what we make up for in readability, we may often lose in cognition. Sometimes, for whatever reason, our interfaces may end up obfuscating things, and so we'll need to find ways to recontextualize them to our players. This is where tooltips can be incredibly effective. It's well argued that we process images a lot faster than words, so tooltips are an incredibly useful way to convey extra information to the player as they interact with parts of a game, while maintaining the goal of keeping an interface clean or easy to read. For me, tooltips are a great example of designers using an input method and target platform to its strengths. We're so used to mousing over things in other software, player behavior may inherently cause them to explore the screen to gain a better understanding of their context, and so it only makes sense to predict and allow for that curiosity in the games that we create. Hi there, I'm Matt, and welcome to Game Dev Guide. In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can build a flexible tooltip system for your game in Unity. We're going to design a tooltip system that handles the basics of showing and hiding a tooltip object. We're going to create a tooltip trigger script for anything that can be interacted with in our scene that we'd like to show a tooltip on. We're also going to take a look at how we can use some of the UI components to size the tooltip dynamically based on its contents, and how to offset our tooltip based on the mouse position to avoid the contents rendering off screen. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? I have a little prototype game here with some tiles and a basic UI. Most of the assets here are provided by the infamous and ever wonderful Kenny, links to those posted in the description. Currently, it's pretty unclear on our scene what anything does, and so I think we need to use some tooltips to better explain the lay of the land to the player. We want our tooltip to always render on top of anything in our game's UI. So the best way I've found to do this is to have a completely different canvas exclusively for our tooltip. This way, we can set the sort order in the canvas renderer to its maximum value and confirm that it'll always be on top. Next, let's create our tooltip itself. I want my tooltip to be inside a white box and have a header area and then a description area. So I'll create the base background for the box using an image and add a vertical layout group and two text mesh pro elements and label them accordingly. I want my tooltip to dynamically resize based on the content. So let's disable the child force expand options on the vertical layout element and enable the control child size option instead. Next, let's add a content size fitter to the image and set both properties to preferred size. Now, as our text increases in length, our image resizes to fit. If we enable or disable the header or content, our image also resizes. So this is okay, but if our text is too long and isn't formatted, we end up with a rather long and unreadable block of content here. To avoid this, we need our text field to have its size limited by the layout system. So let's add a layout element to our tooltip and set the preferred size to 500. Now, our text wraps nicely and our tooltip looks more presentable. However, we now have the issue that if our text is just a few words long, the horizontal size of our box no longer resizes to fit its short content. But if we toggle the layout element on or off, notice how our box resizes. So we need to create a way for our layout element to toggle on or off based on the size of the content. Let's create a new script on our tooltip, simply called tooltip. And at the top, let's add the execute in edit mode attribute and add a reference to our header and content fields, as well as the layout element. Let's also add an integer called character wrap limit. In the update method, let's use a ternary operator to check the length of our fields and define if the layout element should be enabled or not. Now our tooltip will check the field contents and size itself accordingly. So we've now got a tooltip that can take some text and will resize itself. Let's look at how we can get the tooltip to actually show. Let's create a new script on our canvas called tooltip system. In here, let's create a singleton reference and a static method called show and hide. Let's also add a reference to our tooltip. When the show method is called, we'll enable the tooltip, and when the hide is called, we'll disable it. Now, all we need to do is call tooltip system.show from any object that we'd like to show our tooltip. Let's create another script called tooltip trigger. Here, we'll add the event system interfaces for iPointer enter and iPointer exit and call our show and hide tooltip methods. Now, if we add the trigger component to some of our UI elements and play the scene, our tooltip now shows and hides whenever we roll over the object. 
Next, let's get our tooltip displaying some contextual information relative to what we're mousing over. On our tooltip, let's add a set text method with a string for the header and a string for the content. Some tooltips won't need a title, so I want to be able to control whether or not a header is shown and hide the header if the argument is null or empty. It's also worth mentioning that it's kind of pointless setting the layout element in the update method as the size only really needs to change when the text is initially set. So we should probably move this, but if you want the additional functionality of being able to preview the size changes in the editor, consider just wrapping it around an edit mode check first. Now let's go back to our tooltip system script and update our show method to require some content. And finally, on our tooltip trigger, let's add the string properties for our header and content and pass them into our show method. Then we just need to go through and fill out the information we'd like to display in the inspector. Now, when we mouse over our elements, the tooltip displays the corresponding text and titles. However, it's not very useful being in the center of the screen like that. Most tooltips behave by appearing adjacent to the cursor, so let's get our tooltip following our mouse. In our update method, let's assign the mouse position to a vector2, then we'll set the position of our tooltip based on the mouse position. I'm using the built-in input system for this, but if you're using the new input manager package, you'll likely want to use the input system UI input module class and get its value using the action.readValue vector2 method instead. I really don't know why it's so verbose, but whatever. Now, if we roll over our items, our tooltip will, well, it'll probably render in the center of the mouse and flicker a whole bunch like this. Let's deal with the flickering first. That's occurring because as soon as our tooltip shows up, the mouse is blocked by our tooltip, which cancels the trigger and hides the tooltip. And then because it disappears, it's no longer blocked. So the mouse over event registers again and shows the tooltip again and so on and so forth. This is simply fixed by telling our canvas not to block raycasts by disabling or removing the graphics raycaster from the tooltip canvas. Now let's deal with our tooltip being positioned to the center of our mouse. At first glance, it looks like we can just change the pivot point of our rec transform to the bottom right hand side of our mouse cursor. However, as we move our mouse to the right or bottom of our screen, you can see that this still causes our tooltip to render incorrectly. And we don't really want our tooltip message displaying off screen as that kind of defeats the point of having one. So we need to dynamically anchor our tooltip relative to the position of the mouse and the screen width and height. And that's looking pretty good now. We have a tooltip that flexibly resizes and position itself nicely. The final touch is adding a little bit of input delay. After all, the user might just be clicking the button and may not want to see the tooltip every single time they mouse over. So I'm going to use my favorite tweening library for this. You'll know it, folks. It's tween tween time. You can, of course, write your own coroutine instead, though. It's pretty straightforward here. We'll just add about half a second delay before calling the method, but cancel the delayed call if the mouse escapes the element. I've also added a little fade animation for when the tooltip is enabled. As an aside, it's also worth mentioning you can get tooltips working on world elements. Just make sure that the game object has a collider of some sort and simply edit the tooltip trigger to also include the on mouse enter and on mouse exit methods. And that's pretty much it for this video. A straightforward one this time around, but many of you seem to respond well to these UI related videos. So hopefully it's been useful. As always, let me know your thoughts down below. Also, just a reminder that the Game Dev Guide channel has its own Discord server. It's home to a number of developers from the community who are all working together to share knowledge and help each other out. This video actually came into fruition from a question that was raised by a member over there. So if you like the idea of being a greater part of the community and getting to know fellow subscribers of the channel, be sure to follow the link in the description down below. And who knows, maybe something you're struggling with might end up as an inspiration for a video here on the channel. Anyway, that's all from me. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Or if you'd like to check out more videos from me first, there's a couple of recent ones on screen now that you might also be interested in. As always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you again next time.